Hi friends! Welcome to the third installment and last one for this year of our series Rediscovering the Aging of NC Gallery. Today we are in the Greek collection and we're taking a look at one of our favorite artists, Dimitrios Galanis, and one of our favorite works of art, Boy on a Mechanical Horse. Now, I want you, and whoever you are with, to take a good close look at this work of art. What exactly do you see? What is this little boy wearing? What sort of setting is he in? What kind of clues can we find when we take a close look at this work of art? Let's go. So, now that you looked at this work of art, what did you notice? What kind of clues can you find in this work of art? So you can see his dress is kind of unusual. Do you think that this is a boy from yesterday or from nowadays? Or do you think maybe what we're seeing is a boy from many, many years ago? So if we look closely, the clothes that he's wearing in particular, along with, of course, the toy, tell us that most likely this boy is a boy from many, many, many years ago. Now, as I mentioned, the boy is sitting on a mechanical horse that sort of looks like a bicycle. So there's like a wheel in the front. Now, do you have a toy that's like this? Is this the kind of toys that, that you guys play with? It's interesting to think that a hundred years ago, there was a possibly a completely different selection of toys. So especially anything that you have with technology. So for example, what you're able to watch right now with me talking was definitely not available to a boy like this boy that we have here. So it'd be a nice idea to have a conversation with your parents or even with your grandparents and ask them what kind of toys that they have available. What ways did they spend their free time? You might discover lots and lots of other ways to entertain yourself. Now, we're going to have a little talk about the kind of technique that this artist used to create this work of art. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at a few more works by Dimitrios Galanis that we have here at the Age of Leventis Gallery. So now you've had a chance to kind of take a look at all of these works by Galanis. Now, if you've seen some of our other videos or if you've come to the gallery, or generally if you look at art often, you'll notice that there's many different ways to create a work of art. Something that's perhaps more common and something that you might have done as well is using paint and using paint to draw something or to fill in different areas. Galanis used a different kind of method to create his work of art. He was an etcher, so he used the method of printmaking. Now there's lots and lots of different ways that you can do printmaking, but the two main ways are this. The one is when you etch or carve out on a surface. So for example, you might have a piece of um, copper or bronze and you will etch with a special kind of a carving tool out a certain um, drawing that you want to do. You will put ink on it and then you will print it. Another kind, for example, um, you might take a stone and you will paint what you want to paint onto the stone and then use the stone to print on another surface, usually it's paper. So this is what um, Galanis did in these works of art here. And you can see they can still be very different in terms of the thickness, in terms of the depth of color that he might put, but it's really just another way of creating a work of art. Now I know that all of the stuff that I said might have sounded a bit complicated. Actually, various methods of printing are complicated even for people who know a lot about the arts. So we thought we would make a short video showing about lino printing. 
Take a look at it now. Now that you've had a little look at what line up printing is about, we are going to go to Renoir's workshop and do, choose a different kind of method and do our own unique print. Let's go. Hi friends, welcome to Renoir's workshop. Today we're going to make our very own monotype. Now, here's some of the material that you need. Need some nice different color paints of your choice. You need somewhere to put the paint. Here we have some paper plates, but you might have something else, it's up to you. And then we need a surface upon which we are going to draw and then put the paint on it. So what we've done, what we thought was the easiest, this old piece of cardboard, it's quite sturdy. And then you cut some aluminum foil, like this, and try to keep it nice and flat as much as you can. Although everything you do will add character to your painting. And then you will need the paper that you, of course, are going to print on afterwards. And then some material to actually use the car. So you could use a really pointy pencil, you could use a kebab stick. And then we need something to actually put the paint on. Now you can use a thick brush, but ideally you have something like this, which is like a little sponge that's on this sort of thing that kind of rolls like that. That would work perfectly. And now we're gonna do this little close-up look so you can actually see how the whole thing works.
final product. And modern types are fun because every time something else will come, something different will come. But also you don't exactly know what will come through. So you can see that some of these sort of lines are from the actual material that we did it on, from the aluminum foil. The other nice thing is that you can actually reuse the, um, the initial piece that you've done if you just sort of wipe it off with like a wet cloth and then you can draw something on it again if you don't rip it like I did by accident. Um, and really it's endless possibilities. Any kind of color mixtures and different nice things will come out. A good way to use your creative juices. Get them flowing. So thank you for being with us today and have a lovely Christmas, and we will see you next month. Bye-bye.